This is Joe, and that is Jarvis. Today we're gonna find out what it's like to get punched in the face by an industrial robot. <laughs> Let's get started. Come on, buddy, you can take one more. Once I decided that Jarvis was gonna be punching something, I figured he should probably have a fist. So here I have a 3D model of the fist that we're gonna be using. At first I thought I would just 3D print the fist, but after holding it in my hand, I thought, you know, Jarvis really needs to have a metal fist. So I could CNC machine it, and I even went through the trouble of programming it, or perhaps I could cast it. And to me, that seemed like the more fun idea. So let's cast it. I started by cutting out this little aluminum disc. This will serve as a little space filler below my mold so that I can cast the part a little bit oversized and then machine off the bottom to make sure it's flat. This spray that I'm using is a mold release and hopefully that'll allow the silicone to come out a little bit easier. Speaking of silicone, the stuff that I'm using here can handle temperatures up to about 450 degrees, which is not nearly high enough to melt aluminum, but I don't need it to be aluminum. I just want a metal fist. So I started looking at metals with decent strength that have low melting temperatures and I found bismuth 10 to be a good fit for my needs. And so that's what I'm gonna be using here. Now in hindsight, this turned out to be much harder to get out than I initially expected. I basically took a metal rod and kind of pried into the side of it for a while and then slowly wiggled it out. A better option would have been uh, some sort of disposable shell, something I could easily cut off and remove instead of an aluminum pipe <laughs> that I didn't want to destroy. Now I'm making a seam here on the side, but it's pretty easy to close that back up with some rubber bands. Cutting these slits on the side allowed me to get the original mold out and also to get the final mold out as it turns out. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, I have a general idea. This will be my first try. So let's see what happens. If anything goes wrong, no big deal. I'll just try it again. Oh boy. It's fully melted, I think. I don't know why I'm so nervous. I just said I could do this again if I mess up, right? All right, Jeremy, let's just do it. Oh, that's heavy. That's heavy. Okay. Either I'm gonna have a nice looking fist or a big lump that I can heat up and try again. Wow. God, that is so solid. I don't know that with multiple tries, I'm gonna get much better than this. I mean, those holes are pretty small. Wow. Now, I still need to machine the bottom of the fist. So the next problem to solve was, how do I hold onto this thing in the mill? I totally cheated by 3D printing this little box and then filling in the cavity of the box with the rest of the silicone that I had left over. I had zero expectation that this would work but it actually turned out really amazing. And whenever I'm trying something new in the shop, I always invite my son out to help me get it set up so that he can watch me fail, at least my expected failure. That feels kind of counterintuitive, but in my experience, when I mess up is when I learn the most. And so my hope is that he'll learn when I'm learning. In this case, it wasn't much of a learning moment because it actually worked to my surprise. <laughs> In hindsight, I can see why the 3D printed mount worked, mostly because the material ended up being really soft and I was using very conservative feed rates. Since I was machining the part anyway, I decided to add this little cavity to try and get the weight down a bit. This little adapter plate here is 3D printed. Of course, if I went through all the trouble to make a fist for Jarvis, I figured his competition should also be dressed for the fight. Thus the karate uniform and the corresponding white belt. The next task is to program the robot to actually throw a punch. <laughs> Whoa, did not expect that. All right, from the top. Wow. It's like it punches you and comes right back up. I like it. 
Once I was confident the robot could throw a good punch, I rearranged the shop a bit so that the kids could safely watch the big showdown. All right, so everybody over here so that I can turn the robot back on. Can he stand up by himself? You know, I got him to stand up earlier and I'm hoping I can do that again. All right, I think he's okay. Okay, I hope you'll be safe, Mr. GoPro. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay, let's do a countdown. Three, two, two one. Oh, click the wrong button. Okay, one more time. Ready? Three, Three two, <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, a little bit more like a clothesline than a punch. He kind of got like, felt like WWF wrestling there or something like that. good balance to get him to stand. Come here. I think after we punched him, he's just not balanced anymore. We broke Joe. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Joe can hold himself up. Countdown. Three, Three two, two, one. hit the shoulder this time instead of the uh, clothesline, so we're close. Oh, yeah. Alright, so I say we do one more punch like this to try to hit him right in the middle of the chest, yeah. and then we'll do a straight punch. Two, one. Oh! <laughs> we missed him! <laughs> Two, one. Okay, future Jeremy butting in here for a moment. The day that my son is talking about here, when we were pushing a robot, was a day I wasn't recording. I don't want them to feel like every moment in the shop is going to be on a YouTube video. So it was just us playing around with the robot. We were pushing it so hard, the belt was actually skipping teeth. Unfortunately, I can't show it to you because this is not something I want to do again. But as he said, he has seen it go faster than it's going right now. The speed that you're seeing now is probably the fastest I can safely run the robot without damaging it. So we need to try, we want to try a straight punch, right? Straight punch. Well, I think we should just duct tape the GoPro to his head. Yes. Does that work for you guys? So now Joe can see himself getting punched. We got to go back and look at this footage. <laughs> this just feels so wrong. I mean, we've hit him a bunch of times now. He's getting all sloppy and, uh... Just oh, Okay. Yep, yeah, he's getting more and more flimsy per shot. <laughs> but he's standing up on his own. No, he's more flimsy. Two, one. This seemed like a good time to evaluate Joe's condition, and I took this opportunity to also bring up the safety question. What do you guys think? A robot's dangerous? Me. Almost your standing Joe. Yeah, 
Okay. 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 Okay.